What up, YouTube? Knowledge and self-determination. Back with you guys with some more Black History every day. Um, so we're going back to February 25th, um, 1978. Daniel Chappie James, first African-American four-star general, dies in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Um, and just a quick side note, um, I know I've been uh, slacking on my Black History every day, but as I said before, and I think like my first video, that if I don't actually get to doing Black History every single day, I will, however, make up for those days that I have missed by basically going back to the last date that I actually did or going to the next date that I should have done after the last date and continuing in the process of going forward with every day in Black History. So even if I miss days, I won't miss the days if you get what I'm saying. So anyway, I'll go ahead and get started. Daniel Chappie James Jr was a fighter pilot in the U.S. Air Force, who in 1975 became the first African-American to reach the rank of four-star general. He is the third person of sub-Saharan origin, which I really don't like that term, sub-Saharan origin. I really don't I really don't like that because what they're trying to tell you is that, um, that, that the Africans that are below the Sahara Desert are darker than the, the, the northern light-skinned uh, Africans like, the one, like Libya, for instance. Just think of Gaddafi. Uh, how light the uh, how light the, uh, the 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 population of the, the Africans get the further north you get. I don't like that term sub-Saharan uh, sub-Saharan because it, it, it's 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 a term. It's it's a quote unquote liberal way to continue to have divide and uh, and differences amongst African people. Because General Gaddafi, he he did not he 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 said that we're all Africans. He didn't care what color your skin was. They're all African. Anyway, I'm sorry for digressing. I just wanted to get that off my chest because I don't like that term sub-Saharan Africa. If you're from Africa, you're from Africa. Let's talk about the country in Africa that you're from. Third person of sub-Saharan origin. And again, think about it. Sub-Saharan sub -Saharan origin. I mean, the man, the man was born in... He's an American. He's an American. But they're using the term sub-Saharan to, to, to notate to you that he's a dark-skinned brother, basically. That's what they do it. That's how, that's why they say sub-Saharan, so you know which part of the Sahara Desert he's he's he, which part of the Sahara Desert to basically cut a color code him with. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm gonna continue. When I apologize, guys, to become the highest-ranking officer in the Western world after Thomas Thomas Alexander Dumas, 1793, and Toussaint L'Overture, 1797. James graduated from the Tuskegee University in 1942, which we all know. Uh, was built by Booker T. Washington, where he received a Bachelor of Science degree in physical education. He continued civilian pilot training under the government-sponsored civilian pilot training program. He remained at Tuskegee as a civilian instructor pilot in the Army Air Corps later that July. Throughout the remainder of the war, James trained pilots for the all-black 99th Pursuit Squadron. He did not see combat himself until the Korean War. The 99th, and, and I'm just going to give you guys some info on the 99th Flying uh, Training Squadron because these are, uh, th these guys are legendary. They're very historic figures. Um, so I'll get into that a little bit. It is part of the, I'm sorry, the 99th Flying Training Squadron or 99 FTS is part of the 12th Flying Training Wing based at Randolph Air Force Base in Texas. It operates T-1 Jayhawk aircraft conducting flight training. The squadron was formed during World War II as the first flying unit for the African Americans. Known as the Tuskegee Airmen, the unit served with distinction in the European theater of operations. Following the war, it was served, yeah, it was served as a flight training unit for four years in the 1940s until its inactivation. It was reactivated in 1988 to once again fill a flight training role. And again, this is a little bit of history on this too. Um, now, again, like I said, uh, it was the first flying unit for African-Americans because African-American and or black people were not allowed to fly in the Air Force. They were not they were not allowed to fly. They would not train black people to fly fighter jets. They, they just wouldn't. Um, and we know the typical excuses. Oh, uh, a black person isn't smart enough to be able to handle uh, a machinery of, th of this complexity or this set in the third. It, just, just a, a whole host of, you know, whack-ass, uh, pardon my language, whack uh, excuses 
to keep black people from shining and excelling in a new area of expertise. Uh, but yeah, they wouldn't allow that. That's why there was an all black unit. Um, and thanks to people like Daniel Chappie James, that actually came into existence. So anyway, I'll continue on. The 99th was originally formed as the Army Air, Air Force's first African-American fighter squadron, then known then known as, I guess, I guess it should say, then known as the 99th Pursuit Squadron. And a, another thing, going back to the, uh, the, the Tuskegee Airmen, I don't know if you guys know this about the Tuskegee Airmen, but first and foremost, when I was in military school um, uh, on the East Coast, I actually met, because they actually visited uh, one of the Air, uh, one of the, um, Air National Guard bases or Air Force bases on the East Coast. Um, they, I think they were, I think they were, they were probably touring the country at this point. And I actually got a chance to meet some of these men, and that was a very um, inspirational moment in my life when I met these men. It actually, uh, it actually made me um, make up my mind about actually wanting to join the Air Force um, when I got out of uh, military school. I mean, when experimenting on by the U.S. government, infecting them with syphilis, unbeknownst to themselves, which would later cause them to have some of them died. Um, because of the syphilis injections, it um, destroyed their reproductive systems. They pass it on to their wives. You know, some of their, their some of their wives' reproductive uh, systems were, um, were 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 irrevocably damaged because of this. They wanted to try and sterilize black people, and syphilis was one of the uh, the, the STDs that they used to experiment on these men in order to sterilize them, like they've been trying to do for, to black people for years. I'll continue on now. The 99th was originally formed as the Army's, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay. Army's Air Force first African American fighter squadron, then known as the 99th Pursuit Squadron. The personnel, the personnel received their initial flight training at Tuskegee, Alabama, Alabama, sorry, earning them the nickname Tuskegee Airmen. The squadron was originally tentatively scheduled to fly air defense over Liberia, but was diverted to the Mediterranean Theater of Operations. All black military pilots who trained in the United States trained at Moulton Field, the Tuskegee Army Airfield, and were educated at Tuskegee University, located near Tuskegee, Alabama. The group included five Haitians from the Haitian Air Force, Alex Pasquette, Raymond, now pardon me if I mess up these last names, Casagnol, Pelissier, Nicholas, and Ludovic Adans, and Ella, what's that? Eberly Goybog, I think that's, I'm mangling these names, I apologize for that. There was also one pilot from Port of Spain, Trinidad, Eugene Theodore. General James was born in 1920 in Pensacola, Florida, where he graduated from Washington High School in June 1937. From September 37, 1937 to March 1942, he attended Tuskegee Institute, where he received a Bachelor's of Science degree in Physical Education and completed civil civilian pilot training under the government-sponsored civilian pilot training program. In September 1949, James went to the Philippines as flight leader for the 12th Fighter Bomber Squadron, 18th Fighter Wing at Clark Field. In July 1950, he left for Korea where he flew 101 combat missions in P-51 Mustang and F-80 aircraft. James returned to the United States and in July 1951, went to Otis Air Force Base, Massachusetts, as an all-weather jet fighter pilot with the 58th Fighter Inceptor, Interceptor Squadron, later becoming operations officer. And, and in, uh, let's see, April 1953, he became commander of the 437th Fighter Interceptor Squadron and assumed command of the 60th Fighter Interceptor Squadron in August 1955. So just take a, take a second to think about this for a second. This man was was one of the people who trained one of the greatest uh, um, uh, combat air uh, combat pilot uh, squadron during World War II. He was he he trained these guys, and they they flew some of they they flew uh, I think consecutively some of the most successful protection missions um, during that time. And also, um, let's another note that I want to drop in here too. Uh, this work, they, 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 cause the Tuskegee Airmen, and there's a movie about these uh, about these men also. Um, God, I cannot remember the name of the movie. Is the name of the movie Tuskegee Airmen or Airmen? 
I can't remember the name of the movie, but a movie came out within the last few years or so that was based loosely on their um the these combat pilots. Now, in World War II, um, when Hitler was defeated, um, and the U.S. you know was transporting a, a lot of the German prisoners of war, most of them scientists who eventually were naturalized citizens and ended up working for the government. But <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah, they uh again, America was so racist. These men, now mind you, black men weren't even allowed to fly airplanes or be fighter pilots, right? But they fought for the right to do so because they wanted to fight for this. They wanted to fight for a good cause. Right? Irrespective of that, the American government, Americans, white people, let's just say it, uh, keep it in context. Again, this is not me hating on white people. I'm keeping these things in context. Now, they were so racist towards black people that even though these men fought and put their lives on the line in World War II, you know that they would not allow American soldiers to sit in the same passenger cars as the white soldiers and the white German uh, prisoners of war. They made the black soldiers sit in the back. Now, just, just, just take a second to think about that for a second. Here we have a force, uh, Hitler's Nazi Germany, who were trying to conquer the world, kill all Jews, or, and basically all non-white people for the most part, because Ashkenazi Jews are not the only people that were slaughtered during the Holocaust, during World War II. They were not the only ones. They're just the only ones that, you know, for some reason, history allows you to know about. But in any event, so just, just take that into account, mind you. We're good enough to risk our lives, but we're not good enough to sit in the same car with the same soldiers we fought next to, died for, got shot for, and killed for. Right? So, anyway. Moving along. In September 1949, James... Eh, I read that, sorry. James returned to the United States and in July 1951 went to the oldest Air Force Base Massachusetts or all weather pilots. Sorry, I read that as well. April 1953, read that also. James next was assigned to headquarters U.S. Air Force as a staff officer in the Air Defense Division of the Office of the Deputy Chief of Staff for Operations. In July 1960, he was transferred to RAF Bentwaters in England, where he served successfully as Assistant Director of Operations and then Director of Operations, 81st Tactical Fighter Wing, Commander, 92nd Tactical Fighter Squadron, and Deputy Commander for Operations for the 81st Wing. In September 1964, James was transferred to Davis Monthan Air, Air Force Base, Arizona, where he was Director of Operations Training and later Deputy Commander for Operations for the 400 and, I'm sorry, 4,000, 453rd combat crew training wing now this man has won a number a number of, uh, of awards um and i'm gonna just go ahead and read them all for you guys just so you can get a, a pretty good idea of what i'm talking about air force command pilot wings uh officer secretary of defense initiation identification badge defense distinguished Service Medal, Air Force Distinguished Service Medal, Legion of Merit with one oak leaf cluster, Distinguished Flying Cross with two oak leaf clusters, Meritorious Service Medal, Air Medal with 13 oak leaf clusters, Air Commendation Medal, Presidential Unit Citation with three oak leaf clusters, Air Force Outstanding Unit Award with three oak leaf clusters, Combat Readiness Medal, Army Good Conduct Medal, Army Defense Service Medal, American Campaign Medal, World War II Victory Medal, Army of Occupation Medal, National Defense Service Medal with star, Korean Service Medal with four campaign stars, Vietnam Service Medal with seven campaign stars, Air Force Longevity Service Ribbon with seven oak leaf clusters, Army Air Force Reserve Medal, Air Force Marksman, Marksmanship Ribbon, Republic of Korea Presidential Unit Citation, United States Service Medal, Republic of Vietnam Campaign Medal. It's a lot, right? The civilian awards that James, that General James received include the following. And it's a lot of those, too. Builders of Greater Arizona Award, 1969. Phoenix, Phoenix Urban League Man of the Year Award. Distinguished Service Achievement Award from Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity, 1970. American Legion National Commander's Public Relations Award. Veteran of Foreign Wars Commander-in-Chief Gold Medal Award and Citation, and citation 1971. Capitol Press Club, Washington, D.C. Salute to Black Pioneers Award, 1975. And all in 1976. The Air Force Association Jimmy Doolittle 
Chapter Man of the Year Award, Florida Association of Broadcasters Gold Medal Award, American Veterans of World War II Civil Helmet Award, United Service Organization Liberty Bell Award, Black Book Minority Business and Reference Guide Par Excellence Award, American Ac Academy of Achievement Golden Plate Award, United Negro College Fund Funds Distinguished Service Award, Horatio Alger Award, VFW Americanism Medal, uh, Bishop Wright Air Industry Award, and the Kitty Hawk Award, Military. He was awarded also Honorary Doctor of Law degree from University of West Florida in 1971, University of Akron in 1973, Virginia State College in 1974, Delaware State College in 1975, and St. Louis University in 1976. He was named Honorary National Commander of the Arnold Air, Air Society in 1971. This man has had an illustrious career. He is someone who should not be forgotten as an African-American man who paved the way for the Tuskegee Airmen. He trained these men. He trained one of the greatest fighter, fighter squadrons of World War II. This man should never be forgotten. General James met his wife Dorothy while he was at Tuskegee Institute, and they were married on the campus on July, I'm sorry, November 3rd, 1942. They had two sons and one daughter. His wife Dorothy died on May 2nd, 2000, and is buried with him in Arlington National Cemetery. General James's son, Lieutenant General Daniel James III, also served in the United States Air Force as a fighter pilot and in the Texas Air National Guard. He served from 1995 to 2002 as the adjunct general of the Texas National Guard, the first African American to hold the post. So his son has made history as well, and as director of the, the Air National Guard from 2002 to 2006. In the summer of 2006, he retired from the Air Force at the rank of Lieutenant General after 38 years of total commission service on active duty and as Air Guardsman. A Lockheed P-80 shooting star is on display at Otis Air National Guard Base, former Otis AFB, in Massachusetts with General James's name written under the cockpit. The James Sports Center at Scott AFB Air Force Base, for short, Illinois, is named after General James, and there is a plaque that was dedicated on February 12, 1979. General James died on February 25th, 1978. And although he was 58 years old, I, I, I did not see any cause of death. So I, so I cannot assume what actually killed the man. But here is another great figure in, uh, in history, American history, African-American history, since it has to be separate. This man has done a lot with his life. And as I stated, he is someone who should be remembered because he was one of the major forces behind the legendary Tuskegee Airmen. If you guys seen the movie, I, I, I haven't seen the movie yet. I don't know if they even depict this man in the movie. But if, if, if this movie is trying to be historically accurate, then I sure as hell hope they did. But it's all for right now. Um, the next we'll be doing for that same day, February 25th, will be uh, about welterweight boxing champion Jersey Joe Walcott, who died in Ohio in 19... 94. So stay tuned guys. Um, there's more coming for February 25th.